Hey there, Virgo. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to your reading for the month of June of 2021. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Eric. It's very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up, guys? So I'm in a little bit of a different uh, setting right now. Um, for those of you that have been following along, you know I'm. we've been having power issues on uh, the island for the last week, um, and so I'm still without power at home, so I'm staying at a friend's house right now, or at least I'm here at a friend's house right now so that I can get this work done. Yeah, she's got power, she's got Wi-Fi, that's all I need. So here we are. Um, so please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Uh, we are talking general energies here, so whatever needs to come through for you right now, no matter what the topic is, that's what we're talking about here, okay? Um, keep in mind also that we could be talking to a cross-watcher, yeah, so if you are, like, cross-watching for a Virgo, um, and what I'm saying resonates... Or even if you are the Virgo. And what I'm saying resonates, but not exactly in the way that I'm saying it. If it resonates in your life a different way, just like fit it together as it fits in your life. But please don't try to fit anything that does not make sense or does not uh, uh, naturally fit or naturally resonate with the situation, okay? Um, yeah, also, this is, a, this is a timeless reading, yeah? So um, just because it's a message that's dated for June of 2021, it doesn't mean that it absolutely has to apply or resonate for that time period of your life. We could be talking about something that happened in the past. We could be talking about something that's coming on down the future, down the pipeline, okay? So just keep that in mind. All right, Virgo, let's get into this here for you. Um, I have your pre-shuffle here. And I'm going to say that this is the second time that I'm doing your reading because about 10 minutes into the, the, the session last time, um, the, the video got corrupted, the photo booth froze, and I had to start all over. Um, also, please bear with me because now my allergies are acting up. My sinuses are starting to... There's some powerful energy going on for you right now, Virgo, and it's really coming through me right now. Um, and I'm trying to I'm trying to see how this is relevant to your energy because my allergies are flaring. So there's okay. Uh, what I'm getting for you, Virgo, is that, um, and this is similar to what was coming through the first time I did your reading. So I'm gonna link the two together. The first time I was trying to do your reading the queen of cups came out and she was saying that you needed to, you need to face your emotions. You need to face how you feel about something. Now is not the time to be making a decision. You had the queen of cups and you had the two of wands in reverse. You had the star with the eight of wands. And then at the bottom of the deck, you had the three of wands and a bunch of other cards that came out from the Leo reading that I did right before yours. So, if this reading is resonating for you in some way, or even if not, I feel like some of you actually might want to check out that Leo reading. Either you have Leo in your chart, or you're dealing with a, like you're in a relationship with a Leo, or the message would just resonate for you. Like, I, it, you don't have to have any sort of Leo existing in your life right now for that to resonate, okay? So don't worry about it. Um, but if you feel intrigued enough, go ahead and check that Leo reading out. Um, but in the first... The first round of trying to do your reading, like I said, I was I was saying that you need to face your emotions. It now is not the time to be making a decision as to which way you want to go because you're not going to be able to effectively make that decision, two of wands in reverse, until you understand how it is you feel about certain circumstances or whatever it is is going on around you at this time. Queen of Cups. For some of you, I was also saying, picking up that this is one of the first times you've ever really embarked on the adventure of diving into your emotions and understanding how it is you feel. Some of you have been, for the longest time, pushing your emotions away, and you can't continue to do that, okay? So, what you have here in, your, in the second round, or the, the second try, you have the Knight of Wands, the Three of Pentacles, the Five of Cups, the Hierophant, and the Four of Wands. At the bottom of the deck is the Wheel of Fortune to the King of Swords, okay? To the King of Swords, to the Three of Cups, Empress to the Page of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles. Okay, so what I'm getting here, Virgo, is you are in a position of 
uh, aligning with yourself or maybe realigning with yourself, depending on your life circumstances. But what this is saying to me here, Knight of Wands is representing a sense of passion and inspiration. And what this is saying to me, especially coupled with the Three of Pentacles, this is speaking to a sense of alignment with yourself that puts you into direct alignment with what it is you truly want to be doing in your life. What makes you feel activated? What helps you feel passionate? What makes you want to drive forward? What makes you excited? What, what fills you with the zest of life? What makes you really want to continue to do or to, to, to go forward, okay? But that comes from an identification with your sense of self, okay? You have that with the Hierophant, the Five of Cups, and the Four of Wands. And the Hierophant here, to me, is representing a sense of identity that you gained from others, that you gained from institution, that you gained from the hive mind, from social norms, from... And Virgo, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, this makes a lot of sense for your energy. Virgo is a mutable energy, which to me, I, I like to describe mutable energies as like malleable like water. Okay? Water is hard to contain, but whatever container you put it in, it's going to take the shape of that container. Okay? And that's not a bad thing. I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong for that. I mean, that's, it, it's part of who you are. Obviously, that's not wrong. Um, immutable signs are just as important as the cardinal and the fixed signs. All of them are important and are necessary, okay? So that's not a bad thing for you. Uh, but I do feel like that mutable energy has been, is what allows you to really take the shape or take the mold of whatever the container or whatever the life circumstance or situation calls for. And that could really be your strength. But at the same time, it could be your weakness. Because then it's hard to really have a, a, a strong sense of self or a strong sense of identity if you're constantly taking on the shape or the characteristics of whatever situation you find yourself in, right? Okay. So I, I think that's what this is, what this energy or this message for you this month is uh, really trying to get you to do. It's trying to push you into the lane of starting to really gain a sense of identity, okay? The Hierophant here represents the institutions or that container that we put you in or we, we find ourselves in that molds us, that shapes us, that requires to be a certain way or a certain type of person or do certain things to be acceptable in society, right? But you have that with the Five of Cups. Something has gone wrong, Virgo. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to say for you is, especially for Virgos, I mean, like, Virgo, you're a mutable sign, but also uh, Sagittarius and Gemini are Virgo signs. Okay, are, are Virgo signs. Uh, Sagittarius, Gemini, and Pisces are mutable signs. But for you, Virgo, not only are you a mutable sign, but your, your energy is all about perfection, okay? It's all about dotting your I's and crossing your T's. It's all about making sure that all the fine details are in place and are in place properly, okay? You can see Virgo energy as like the editor to, uh, to an author's book, right? Sitting there with a very clear analytical mind, making sure that everything is in place, everything is proper, everything, everything's done right. The opposite sign is Pisces. Pisces is, is about perfection too, but Pisces is about perfection in terms of the universe, uh, in the terms of you know, universality or the collective or spiritual perfection. Pisces is where you get into the realm of appreciating the perfection of you, who you are as a whole and complete spiritual being. Virgo is about the perfection of the mundane or the physical world, right? And that can be... That can be tough to deal with a lot of the time. And so I feel like that's another element here, Virgo, that is affecting what's going on for you. Something, like I said, something has gone wrong. Five of Cups. In terms of the institution, you, uh, the institutionalized energies or the social norms or whatever that have been in place for you, 
that now seem to be changing or either no longer have the same effect or no longer have the same value or you're just starting to see the cracks in the foundation of this institution that I feel like you might have been clinging to or you found a lot of security in. You're starting to see the falsehoods. You're starting to see the lies behind it. But when that falls away, now you have an opportunity to find, wow, that's, oh, okay, I'll say it. What I just heard was now you have the opportunity to find salvation within yourself. Three of Pentacles. Three of Pentacles is an energy of self-mastery, of working on yourself. Four of Wands is also, uh, I'm feeling like this is an energy for you. The Four of Wands lately, for the readings that I've been doing for the collective, has represented a sense of stability within yourself, spiritual foundation. The core of your being, having solid foundation within the core of your being, okay? So instead of relying on the foundation here, Virgo, in the Hierophant, you are being asked to let that go, let that fall away. Because also, Five of Cups is, a level, is, is an energy of grieving, sure. But also, you have these three cups here, right, that seem to have, that are, that are reversed or that are upside down and are potentially spilling out. Normally, these three cups are spilling out and then you're left with the two cups behind you. I see the Three of Cups, the official Three of Cups card, as potentially a minor arcana version of the Hierophant when it comes to hive mind mentality, social norms, and stuff like that. Collective ways of thinking that aren't necessarily healthy, okay? And with the Five of Cups here, I'm not going to say this isn't healthy. I'm not going to say this is, like, officially toxic. However, it seems to be coming to an end in your life. It seems to be spilling out in your life. It seems to be from your standards, Virgo, going wrong. Oh, but no. Oh no, there's perfection in everything. Everything happens for a reason. And what I feel like here, Virgo, especially tying this into the first time I tried to do your reading, and I didn't get past the pre-shuffle, right? Uh, but the first time I did your reading, this was all about you understanding your emotions, understanding how it is you truly feel. And I understand, Virgo, for some of you, that's going to be difficult because you have spent so much of your life trying to please others. Virgo, rep uh, Virgo rules the sixth house, which is also your health, your wellness, and of being of service. Okay? As a mutable sign, Virgos are excellent at serving others or they have the potential to be excellent at serving others. And that is a part of our lives. We are meant to be here to work together, to serve each other, which also serves ourselves, right? But some of you have let that go too, go too far. Take that with a grain of salt. Or at least you are reaching a point in your life right now where there's a big change that's happening, Wheel of Fortune, a shift in your fortune, a shift in your environment that is now putting the focus on you and how it is you feel and what it is you truly want. I know you guys see this King of Swords at the bottom of the deck underneath that Wheel of Fortune. Look at what's under the King of Swords. There's that Three of Cups, right? There's the Hive Mind. This is you seeing very clearly what all of this actually represents and how you may need, may need to shift your paradigm, Wheel of Fortune, and create a little more distance between you and those energies create better boundaries, all right? The Queen of Cups that came out in your pre-shuffle the first time I tried to do your reading does represent the ability to hold certain emotional boundaries, okay? When the Queen of Cups is reversed, she's got shit for boundaries, right? She's just letting anybody come up in there willy-nilly, taking, 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 taking without so much as a thank you. And she doesn't even bat an eye. She's like, oh, this is... She's like that dog in the meme where his house is on fire and then and, and he's sitting there at a kitchen table like, no, this is fine. No, bitch, your house is on fire, right? <laughs> okay. So for you, Virgo, you're needing... To, I feel like this is a time period where you are learning to create better... Set better boundaries for yourself and also to take your goals, your feelings, your aspirations, aspirations, whatever, Knight of Wands, into account instead of constantly putting yourself to the side for the sake of others, okay? Uh-oh, I was just gonna say five shuffles here, but last pre-shuffle energy we have for you here is the Emperor 
the Eight of Wands and the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups representing your relationship with yourself. The balance, the bond between masculine and feminine within you. Getting this relationship solid and together, and the way you do that is by understanding your emotions, what it is you feel, and then taking action to work with that. Being the master of your own domain, emperor, the emperor. Which is funny because the empress was at the bottom of the deck before, just before I started doing that, uh, shuffling here. So yeah, this is definitely about the balance between masculine and feminine within you. But here for you, Virgo, you're needing your masculine side to come through and say, no more, enough is enough, is what I just heard. Or we've got to set some stronger boundaries so that you can move forward towards what it is you want, so that you can have that open doorway, so that you can have that clear and honest space. There also may be a level of needing to communicate with the Eight of Wands here, all right? All right, Virgo. Woo! 16 minutes in, and we just got through your pre-shuffle. Yikes. Five shuffles here for you, yeah? One. For my Virgos, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of June 2021. This is two. This is three. Four. And five. All righty, Virgo. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for June of 2021, yeah? Boop. All right. Overall energy. Well, would you look at that? Now we have the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands representing your alignment with what, with who you truly are and what it is you truly want. There is a strong message here for whomever needs, is, is watching this reading, whomever this resonates for. There is a very strong, almost desperate message of you needing to get into alignment with you. Stop letting other people affect how you live your life. You need to live a life of service to yourself first within moderation, of course, but in order for you to be able to be of service to others, effectively, efficiently, authentically, okay? So what is it that you really want, Virgo? Queen of Wands. Underneath the Queen of Wands is the Hanged Man. Underneath the Hanged Man is the Four of Swords, and underneath the Four of Swords is the Nine of Wands, okay? So whatever hang up, whatever hold up you are dealing with right now, whatever feelings of stagnancy that, to be quite honest, Virgo, you could have been feeling this stagnancy for a long time, but this stagnancy has been in an effort to get you to understand what it is you're feeling, right? Hanged man. If you are feeling stuck, if you are feeling stagnant, if you are feeling like you're not going anywhere, if you're feeling uneasy, if you're feeling restless, if you have so much to do in your life to keep you occupied and keep you busy and you're looking at yourself like, why the hell do I feel so damn restless? Why can't I... Why can't I get my shit together? Why can't I get my thoughts together? Why am I, I mean, like, I have so much to do. It's not like I have a lack of anything to do or a lack of anything to accomplish or a lack of anything to deal with, and yet I'm still so uneasy and so restless. Like, what the fuck is going on? F figure it out, Virgo. Start to feel. Look at your feelings. Because I, I, I swear to you that those feelings of stagnancy and restlessness is your higher self or your emotional body coming through saying something is not right. <laughs> and there's some of you out there that are like, well, why don't you just tell me what's wrong? What is not right? And it's like, well, you're asking the question but not looking for the answer. The answer lies within. The answer lies in your emotions. The answer lies in what it is you truly want. The Queen of Wands is so perfect here, Virgo, because the Queen of Wands, in my opinion, as a reader, 
uh, represents is the is the feminine version uh, or the feminine process we can say in terms of the law of attraction, right? And in that case, it's a situation in which you have to feel it. You have to get in alignment with what it is that you want, and you know that you're in, al in alignment with what it is that you want because you because it feels good to you. It brings you a sense of joy. It feels easy. It just like feels like it flows. It feels happy. But when you're in alignment with things that are not right for you, that's when it feels discomfort, un uncomfortable. That's when you feel the discomfort. That's when you feel the stagnancy. That's when you feel the resistance. And that's, your, that's when you know that you're not going in the right direction. So instead of continuing to follow that, that route, you change your focus to get into alignment with what feels good for you. That's when you know you're in the right, going in the right direction. But you're not going to be able to do that, Virgo, if you don't know how you feel. If you don't know what your feelings are saying to you. If you don't know what your emotions are saying to you. Okay? This is all about developing a greater rapport with yourself. You're excellent. You are excellent at feeling other people's shit and dealing with it with them, helping them deal with it. But what about you? Now it's time to turn this service back around and turn it in, inward instead of focusing so much externally, okay? What's in Pisces right now? I believe Jupiter is in Pisces in terms of sidereal astrology. I practice sidereal astrology, guys. Because I'm feeling, it's like, it's almost as if you, and okay, so some of you that are savvy enough, if you are a Virgo rising, um, regardless of what system you use, whether it be mainstream uh, tropical astrology or Vedic astrology or sidereal astrology, I personally practice sidereal astrology. You might want to check what transits may be happening with Pisces in your chart, in your natal chart. And you're going to need to know your rising sign for that because your rising sign sets where the, the signs are in the houses of your chart. Because I'm feeling an energy of, it's like you're now experiencing the, the twin lesson of the Virgo-Pisces dynamic. Whereas Virgo is very physically oriented in terms of perfection. Pisces, like I said, is very uh, spiritually oriented in perfection, in the sense of perfection. Okay, this is a fucking long ass video. But you know what? I'm just going to roll with it, y'all. Let's get into the first half of your reading here. First set of surrounding energies. Oh my God, you cannot make this up. Homegirl came back. She said, you ain't getting rid of me, honey. Queen of Cups. Need I say more? No. Queen of Cups is coupled with... Ah, shit. You are... Are y'all serious? Two of Cups. Mm-hmm. This is your relationship with yourself, babe. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything more. I've said so much about that already. This is just confirmation. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm just saying. I, I just spent almost 25 minutes talking about just this right here, okay? So we're going to move forward. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Virgo, is the three of cups, that hive mind mentality. But also there's a level of celebration. Virgo, if you've been having trouble with the people around you or just your alignment with people, if people have been draining you a lot, these are people that are not necessarily really aligned with you for your highest good. And when you start to do this inner work about understanding your emotions and your feelings and all that, um, you are going to align with people that align with that, okay? So again, if you're, there's a lot of stagnancy happening for you, Virgo. The hanged man. But that stagnancy or those delays or that feeling stuck is a blessing in disguise because it's helping you work towards a, diff a change in perspective, okay? And when you actually align with and make that shift, you are going to align with people that are better for you energetically, okay? Maybe even physically. Three of Cups is coupled with, oh, the Empress. The Empress is representing fertility here. She's also representing the feminine aspects. Some of you are at odds with your femininity. I get it. 
Ain't not, I am not trying to shame anybody, especially if you're a woman. I'm not trying to shame nobody. You may be a woman who is more masculinely oriented when it comes to energy, and that is okay. There is a specific lesson that you're needing to learn here, and that is the lesson of femininity, receptivity, and emotional reality, okay? But the Empress is representing fertility. The strongest thing that I'm getting for you, Virgo, is that the Emp Empress is representing the fact she's trying to remind you that there are... The universe is so incredibly abundant. You are not stuck with the society or the hive mind mentality that you find yourself in currently, okay? Unconditionally love yourself enough to allow yourself to break out of this cocoon or break free from these chains, okay? Your challenge, Virgo, in the first half of your reading is temperance. Balancing your masculine with your feminine. Balancing your opposing sides, balancing your emotions, balancing your feelings. Integration, yes? The temperance is coupled with, ooh, Lottie, the chariot. The chariot is the ultimate form of balance that drives you forward. The chariot brings your light and your dark, masculine and feminine. Masculine represented by the white horse, feminine represented by the dark horse. Good, bad, light, dark, positive, negative. Bringing those into balance within yourself and then allowing that to move you forward, to drive you forward. And there is a sense of knowing what it is that you want or at least what it is you want to move forward towards that comes with this. Queen of Wands, yes? What do you truly want, Virgo? Closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Virgo. Good Lord, this is such a long reading. Five of Wands. Okay. Yeah, you're at odds with yourself. But see, you little fucker. Sorry, there's a mosquito. Um, but see, Virgo, the thing about it is, yeah, you're at odds with yourself right now. And that shit, that makes sense, right? But the only way that you're going to not be at odds with yourself right now or anymore is if you communicate. You hash it out. You figure out what it is you're feeling. You little shit. Yeah, you better fly away. Sorry. Bloodsuckers. Okay, the talk it out with yourself. See, now I'm all paranoid. Because homegirls... God! Yeah, see? Homegirl's flying around here thinking she's gonna, she's gonna let, I'm gonna support her laying eggs. Ha, huh? hell no, honey. Uh-uh. See, this is exactly what we're talking about, Virgo. There are people that are, take, that are, yo, Virgo, you need to watch the Leo reading. There are people that are taking from you. Don't allow it to happen if you don't want it to. Universe works in mysterious ways, y'all. Five of Wands is coupled with the Three of Swords. All right? You damn right I'm getting aggressive here. I ain't, look, I ain't trying to be bit, okay? I ain't trying to get bit. Five of Wands, Three of Swords. And this Three of Swords actually does represent some situations in which you've had, uh, okay, okay. Terrible experiences from the past, direct channel. Terrible experiences from the past and or from your chi uh, a childhood trauma. It could be one of the two. It could be a combination of both. But you, what I'm feeling here is that you have not given yourself the time to really deal with it and understand it and heal from it and put some boundaries in place. Queen of Cups, put some boundaries in place. Uh, to help you heal from that and to not go through it again, okay? Second half of your reading. First set of surrounding energies, Virgo. Well, there you are, the hermit. This is all about understanding what's going on within you, okay? The hermit is coupled with the moon. Whoa, ooh, Virgo. All right, this is some Dark Knight of the Soul shit. There are illusions here. Things are not clear. Things are murky. Things are, you, uh, ooh. 
Going within and facing yourself may be a absolutely terrifying thing for you because there are so many monsters in there, man, that you're just like, you're convinced that it's going to, it's going to kill you. But actually Virgo, when you go within and you really start to face these monsters, these demons, this darkness, this shadow, this whatever, you're going to realize that they're not as bad as you thought. They're just parts of you that feel lost that need integration, that feel unheard and unseen, and that's never cute, right? Second set of surrounding energies for you, Virgo, in the second half of your reading. Well, look at that. Again, the balance between masculine and feminine within you, balancing yourself out, bringing yourself into balance. The emperor. Right underneath, the empress. Now, the emperor is a bit of a hard ass, right? He's a tough cookie, right? He is, the, he is the counterpart to the empress in terms of the fact that he's not very emotional. He's quite emotionless, actually. He doesn't really work with emotions. He works with logic and reason. But he also place, puts boundaries into place. He does not discredit the emotions, right? That's just not his realm. That's his counterpart's realm, the empress. He puts the... He puts the boundaries in place. He makes sure that the realm is safe. He may be rigid. He may be a hard ass sometimes, but there is a reason behind it. And that reason is often surrounded by or, or, or rooted in the safety and the security and of, of the collective or of the domain and getting to where we need to go because we know how to get there. It's like, it's like, it's like wanting to make a specific recipe, right? You can't just do it all willy nilly or make a specific dish. You can't do it all willy nilly. You have to follow the recipe for that dish for it to become, for it to come out consistently time and time again. That's the emperor energy. Okay. So there's a tough lesson here. And the, the, the emperor is coming through with that tough love saying, we need to do, we need to follow this process. And that's pro and this process is facing yourself, facing what's going on within you. Okay. The emperor is coupled with the knight of cups. There it is. There are your emotions. This is you becoming emotionally vulnerable, emotionally aware, at least being able to feel through your emotions and take action on what it is you're feeling. Take action on what it is you're guided, your heart is guiding you towards. The emperor, the emperor energies are protecting you, coming through and asking or, or requiring that certain boundaries be put in place to preserve this. Okay. Your challenge here, Virgo, in the second half of your reading. Deception, lies, tomfoolery and cheating seven of swords you got to face this you've got to come to terms with it and i do feel like for some of you there are some people that around you that you have been very loyal to and you're going to find out they haven't been loyal to you and that's painful some of you have been actively running away from that because that's going to trigger something a very painful memory from your childhood i'm hearing specifically or just from your past that you have been trying to run from for a very, very long time. I am so surprised that the devil hasn't come out here. Seven of Swords is coupled with the Knight of Wands. That's interesting. You've been running from who you are. You haven't been allowing yourself, you've been deceiving yourself or cheating yourself out of getting in alignment with what it is you truly want to do. There she was again. You guys know that it's only the females that, female mosquitoes that bite because they're the one that lay the eggs. They need the blood for, they need the iron and I believe the protein in the blood. I'm sorry, I'm totally giving you like a mosquito crash course here, but I was watching a video on it last night. It was very interesting, but she's back again. Anyway, closing message or potential outcome for you, Virgo. The Six of Pentacles. This is, this is what it's about. 
It's all about reciprocity. It's all about the balance between give and take. Yes, no one, no one is saying to you that you have to stop giving. What we are saying to you is what's necessary is that you have to balance that with receiving as well. Okay. Six of Pentacles is coupled with the magician. You can create this reality for yourself in which you find yourself in positions where there is an equal give and take. But you've got to step into the driver's seat there. You've got to manifest that for yourself. You've got to set the boundaries. You've got to set the boundaries with the people around you and also with the universe. So when the universe comes through and tests you and brings you situations that are vampiric, you can either continue to, to roll with it and just be like, oh, it's okay, universe. Don't worry about it. I'll handle it. My house is on fire. But you know what? This is fine. Or you can say no and reinforce the boundaries you've set for yourself. That is you manifesting reciprocity, okay? All right, let's close this out. Ooh, I'm going to get your closing guidance from the Crystal Mandala deck here. All right, so let's get this five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four, and five. All righty, Virgo. Closing message for you. Closing message for my Virgos, please. For the month of June 2021. You have card number 10, Angel Ista and Carnelian, Nourishment. Let's read that. We bring you the gift of nourishment. You are your body, your mind, and your soul. We want you to feel fed with what brings you life with what helps you feel good, with what heals you, increases your energy and your power. We know that you need and want, I'm sorry, we know what you need and what can assist you to grow in mind, body, and spirit. We know that life can be a banquet for the soul. There are many choices as to what you can, you can feed yourself, and sometimes you may be confused about what is good for you and what is not. Let go of any, get any doubt or shame guilt or fear about being nourished now as we guide you towards what will truly feed your life force and bring you happiness. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic month and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of July. Yeah, take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>